Yes. We are here today to ask you one question. You're here sitting on moral high ground talking about the children of the United States. Yes. When there are children who are not, who are not calling for a ceasefire, you are in Congress and you have not yet called for a ceasefire to save the children that you so preciously sit over here talking about making the children of this country. What about the children of the other countries? What about the Palestinian children in Gaza who are being killed as we speak? And you sit here with no worry, no concern whatsoever to do the right thing. What are you doing to stand up for the Palestinians in Gaza who are being killed as we speak? Why have you refused to call for a ceasefire? Sir, we are here at a, at a, a STEM event, and that's, that's what we're here to talk about. I'm, I'm glad to talk to you after the event, but not you here. You are not calling for a ceasefire, and that does not matter. Excuse me. I understand, but I'm speaking to you right now, okay? I'm speaking. I'm your constituent, and I pay your salary. I'm here to speak to you as your constituent. You do you as well as... You as well as 330. Sir, are you, are, you, are you threatening me in the country? Are you threatening me? Are you threatening me? I'm asking you a question. Are you threatening me? I'm asking you a question. Are you threatening me? Do not do the right thing because these are the American citizens here back home. And you know this. Three Palestinians were shot. Three Palestinians were shot because of you. Three Palestinians were shot because you refused to condemn us. This experience and incident is very resemblant of uh, the courage of a lot of people here in the United States and what they are willing to do to get the point across about what is going currently going on in Gaza and the occupation of Palestine as a whole from uh, from the inception of Zionism. Um, I'm not alone in these types of incidents and this type of courage when we go and we find uh, Congress members and we speak truth to power. Some Congress members are willing to listen and some Congress, uh, Congress members end up uh, evading and are so staunchly pro-Zionist that they must be confr confronted and exposed in these types of situations. But what they end up doing is they end up uh, furthering the Zionist uh, propaganda, the, sign, the Zionist regime's agenda. And Congressman Robert Whitman, I had done my research on him for a number of days prior. I uh, RSVP'd to that uh, event using a fake name so I can actually get in there because uh, they, they may know who I am from Richmond. <clears throat> I got in there with a few other people and we had the plan of... Uh, I, had, I wanted to pub, hold him on public trial. Uh, coincidentally, subhanAllah, I kind of got sidetracked. I got distracted because there were so other staunch pro-Zionists in the room who started yelling at me immediately as I stood up. And so I pivoted a little bit to asking him just the most simple moral question instead of going towards um, holding him on trial for for uh, supporting war crimes going on in Gaza and the occupation as a whole. Mm -hmm. So were you scared? Would you say that you were scared? Um, no, I've, I've been in situations like these here in the United States where I've had to stand up and um, brutally confront, I think is a good word, brutally confront people in, in power, whether it's been police officers, whether it's been uh, just uh, people uh, like Congressman Robert Whitman, but instead they're not congressmen. There have been people um, in different situations where I just had to simply brutally confront at the end of the day. Well, I'm really scared of Allah. <laughs> right, I see. Um, and then you've been released three hours and a half, I believe, uh, after the incident. Um, yes. So b anything happened during that uh, period of detention? Were you subject to any investigations over the question you directed to the congressman, Robert Whitman? No, I was uh, only charged with uh, trespassing onto um, the onto the uh, onto the college property, on the, the Virginia Commonwealth University property. Um, I was a student there. I'm no longer a student there, which is why they uh, uh, charged me with that trespassing charge. And uh, during my time, I was not interrogated. Matter of fact, I spoke probably more than they did, uh, telling the police officer exactly what I had to say and telling them to open their eyes to the truth and also telling them that, asking them, D do you guys see what's going on? Do you guys see that you guys could use your power to... Um, 
to stand up for human rights. You have morals and values as a police officer, and you must stand with those morals and values at all times, not just simply here at home. You know, if you can use your position of power to, you know, to say something and or um, let something slide or any other uh, case, I, it's it's imperative on you to do so. I wasn't interrogated. I wasn't. There was nothing um, that was, uh, you know, uh, out of the ordinary. Just simple uh, processing. You go inside. Lots of paperwork. Lots of scanning, fingerprints, pictures, and that's it. And then you walk out. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, alhamdulillah, uh, I had a good uh, judge that uh, listened to what I had to say, and they decided that I will not, you know. Uh, I can walk free and go to court later instead of having to spend a few nights there and there. But it's all from Fadlullah subhanahu mm -hmm. Did you have any of your colleagues uh, reach out to you after the incident happened? Yes, I uh, work uh, with AMP, American Muslims for Palestine, um, one of the biggest organizations here in the United States doing the work for Palestine. And so... I had a lot of the members from the boards reach out. Uh, we had a lot of people from the community of Richmond reach out. Alhamdulillah, needless to say, the support I got afterwards was something that uh, uh, only makes me want to do this uh, more and find instances to speak truth to power more, inshallah. Mm -hmm. During U.S.-Israel Leaders Summit, Robert Whitman was talking about what he uh, described as a celebration of 75 years of um, great contribution of Israel in the Middle East and also how important um, it is um, the uh, relation between Israel and the US um, um, regarding bringing peace to the area, uh, I mean the Middle East and the whole world. Um, what's your take on, on these words? My take is that uh, he's a person who definitely knows better. So when you're in, when you're a politician, your words matter and you realize that, right? So you, you practice what to say and all that. So if you're a person who is getting uh, money pumped into your campaigns by the APAC lobby and you're sitting with APAC members, you're sitting with Zionists as often as he does, then you will, needless to say, uh, lose your moral values and understand that uh, uh, for the United States to keep furthering its imperialistic and capitalistic uh, agendas and, and power and reach over the world, you must, uh, there must um, be a level of uh, exploitation and um, occupation done on the whole Middle East as a whole, not just Palestine. And Palestine is just the inception of that entire plan that they have for the, um, I forgot the name of it, the Ben Gurion Canal, uh, to, uh, as, a, as an alternative for the Suez Canal. So there are a lot of plans, imperialistic plans, and he, uh, it's, it's the simple power hungry, capital hungry, uh, United States government that feeds people like Congressman Robert Whitman. He's not alone in what he does. He, it's, it's the power hungry over the world and, and to increase imperialistic reach to an extent that has never been seen before. So uh, he, he'll simply further that, for, for further the Zionist regime for, for that reasons at uh, any given day, at any given moment. So 